All right, guys, here's what it looks like we're up against today. A P0394 code, camshaft position sensor B circuit, intermittent bank two. Dave with Mile High Campers coming back at you again with another video. Just to give you a heads up, everything that I found online told me that the P0394 code bank two was the passenger side sensor. However, I replaced the passenger side sensor and it did not fix the problem, which led me to troubleshooting the wiring on both sides and then ultimately replacing the driver side sensor, which fixed the problem. So just something to consider before starting this project. With that said, today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to replace the camshaft position sensor on both the passenger side and the driver side of this 2012 Jeep Wrangler. However, from what I understand, this process may work from 2011 to 2020 Jeep Wranglers with the 3.6 liter V6 motor. I will also be showing you how to troubleshoot the wiring to the sensor. Be sure to watch the entire video because I will also be sharing a couple of tips on how to clear the check engine light. I will have parts and tools linked in the description below, but be sure to always check your part numbers with an authorized dealer. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so first things first here, guys, we're gonna get this removed. So from the information I got from the dealer, there's actually two of these uh, camshaft sensors. One of them is on the passenger side here, and it's right... there. So the second sensor is located over here on the driver's side. Let me go ahead and get in here and show you where it's at. All right, so that's it back in there. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so the first thing we want to do is come in here and we want to pop this little red tab back because that's going to help release the cable. Okay, I think that got it. It looks like it's released now. See if we can move it out of the way. And I'm just using a simple pick tool here. And there it goes, it popped right off. To troubleshoot the wiring, the battery needs to be connected and the key needs to be turned on as far as you can without actually starting the vehicle. Here's the bottom of the plug to the sensor. You can see the pins are labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what we need to do here is test this with a voltmeter. We want to see 5 volts going to pins 1, 2, and 4, while pin 3 is the ground. All right, guys, so I'm going to get in here and I'm looking at the... Uh... I'm looking at pin four here, the one that's labeled pin four. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can see five volts. That's what we wanna see. Looks good. Now we're moving on to pin three, and we shouldn't see anything. That should be our ground. We'll come back and check that in just a second. All right, so now let's move on to two. We wanna see five. It's good. We're moving on to one, and it looks good as well. And I'm also kind of wiggling the wire to see if I'm getting any kind of, uh, you know, disruption and it all looks pretty good. Nothing's it's staying at five, as you can see. So that checks out pretty good. Now let's check the ground. All right. So if the ground checks out, we should see a green light on our meter. And we do. And I'm going to jiggle it a little bit and it's a good connection. So I think all this is looking good. So what I'm going to do is check the driver's side now. All right, so I just moved this guy up and out of the way, and I was able to push this foam right here back far enough to where I got complete access now to the sensor. All right, so I confirmed that we had ground there, and now we're going to check to make sure we've got our 5 volts. There it is on the first. Got it there. All right, and we've got it there. So, okay, so we've got good power and good ground to both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace the sensor here on the driver's side. All right, so first things first here, guys, we're gonna get this removed. Because we're working with an electrical sensor today, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the battery. And then down here by the sensor, you can see I was able to push that foam back 
and now I have complete access to the sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out now using a T30 Torx bit. Here's the new Mopar sensor. The part number is 0514-9141AF-001. According to the dealer, this part number will work for either the driver's side or the passenger side sensor. Obviously, you don't have to go with Mopar Genuine Parts. I decided I wanted to do it. It was only $55 plus tax. There's plenty of online sources you could look at, as well as going to a place like Advanced Auto or AutoZone, where you might be able to get an aftermarket for a little cheaper. But I figured I'd just go with the Mopar. So here we go, let's get it installed. All right, got it all tightened down. Now we just need to put the plug back in. And make sure we get our red locking tab in place. All right, so first things first here, guys, we're gonna get this removed. Because we're working with an electrical sensor today, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the battery. All right, so the first thing we want to do is come in here and we want to pop this little red tab back because that's going to help release the cable. Okay, I think that got it. It looks like it's released now. See if we can move it out of the way. And I'm just using a simple pick tool here. And there it goes, it popped right off. All right, now I'm going to be using a T30 Torx bit. Uh, and a ratchet to try to get this thing loose. Okay, now in theory, this thing should just pull straight out. All right, so there's the old one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the new one, but don't run off just yet. I've got some information at the end of the video I wanna share with you. Here's the new Mopar sensor the part number is 0514-9141 af-001 according to the dealer this part number will work for either the driver's side or the passenger side sensor obviously you don't have to go with mopar genuine parts i decided i wanted to do it it was only 55 dollars plus tax there's plenty of online sources you could look at as well as going to a place like advanced auto or AutoZone, where you might be able to get an aftermarket for a little cheaper but i figured i'd just go with the mopar so here we go, let's get it installed. Get our plug back. Once you get it all the way pushed in, just push this little piece forward and you'll be able to see the red tab over here indicating it's locked. All right guys, and the last step of course is getting your battery hooked back up. All right, so I've been asked in the past, um, how do you reset uh, the code once you have it fixed? It's been my experience in the past that once you reconnect the battery, it resets the code, and if you didn't fix it, the code will pop back up again. That's been my experience. I don't know if that's an actual thing. I'm not a mechanic, so I don't even know if that's the correct way to do it. I've just noticed that that's what's happened over the years as I do projects like this. But the other thing that you could do, which I would highly recommend, especially if you're gonna be doing uh, DIY projects like this a lot, is to just go out and invest the money in one of these scanners. I picked this one up for 30 bucks at Harbor Freight and it does great. I mean, you can spend uh, you know over $100 on one. There's a lot of options to choose from. I'll actually link a few from Amazon down in the description below, so check those out. But with this tool, once you plug it in, it will also give you the option to erase the code. And the same thing, you can erase the code and then if uh, the problem's not fixed, the code will pop back on. So this is another option for you. And like I said, if you're gonna be doing projects like this, you might as well just invest the money. All right guys, so now that I've got the battery reconnected, let's see if the check engine light reset itself. All right, and there you go. Looks like it worked. Be sure to check out all the links and information in the description below. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. Hit that like button if this video helped you out, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace!